That is Pink, uh, Never Gonna Not Dance Again here on Liverpool Live. And a great song, that is. Right, very good morning to you. It is Liverpool Live. It's Roy Bassett with you. Taking you through until one o'clock today. Still to come a little bit later on, we're going to be catching up with Les Stewart, who's going to be talking education with us, the week that was, where we look back on the pivotal moments in history and a bit of current affairs in there as well. Debs is going to be with us from the Freshfields Animal Rescue Centre to tell us about some canine companions that are looking to be rehomed. So that is on the cards. And right now, we're going to take a look at your health because I'm joined by Joe Nash, who is from Mersey Care. Good morning to you, Joe. Good morning. Morning. Joe, just remind us again, in as much of a nutshell as you possibly can, what Mersey Care is all about, because it's a broad church, a lot of departments. Tell us roughly, if you had to describe it in one sentence or less, what Mersey Care is. Also, Mersey Care is a very large NHS uh, community trust uh, that deals in physical and mental health services across the Liverpool um, area and Nosley, Sefton. Right, OK. So... Your area of expertise, where, where do you fit in? I mean, I know you fly between a lot of places, but fundamentally, what is your role within the organisation? Uh, so my role at the moment is the clinical nurse manager uh, in the walking centres. Uh, I've been within the walking centres for the last 20 years. Uh, so what we see are the minor injuries and minor mm. illnesses yeah. um, of patients that uh, come in into the walking centres, all ages, uh, from babies to... 100 plus. Now, uh, I would imagine you probably, you know, you're just about to come off the, the back of a very busy period because you've had Christmas, there's been some particularly harsh weather, COVID is still around us at the moment. What's the status quo like at the moment? How are things in the world of healthcare treatment at the minute? Presently in the walking centres, it's still busy, um, but it's not as busy as the last few months that we had leading up to the Christmas period. Um, obviously, COVID is still around, uh, the normal sort of winter flus, coughs and colds uh, we had to deal with. The strep A um, phase yeah. that we had just before Christmas um, led to quite intense, busy uh, periods across just all remind of me our what walking centres. Just remind me what the strep A, th strep A thing was all around. It was pretty much prevalent with children, wasn't it? Prevalent in children. It's an it's a, it's a infection that's always been around, but it was just more prevalent uh, this year. And we saw lots of, sort of young um, children coming into our walking centres. Um, we had a lot of cases, but we had a lot of worry parents as well and so a lot of our um, uh, treatment will be around sort of patient education and what signs and symptoms to, to look out for and when to bring your children now just just to remind because th these are a couple of the things that i want to pick up on actually and unfortunately that situation does seem to have been relatively contained but as we stand at the moment then if the anybody was listening what are the the signs that perhaps maybe you need to be going and speaking to somebody within your organization when it comes to that particular condition so if you're worried about your your child you know uh, being particularly unwell in themselves they're not drinking they've stopped passing urine um rashes high fevers um you know particularly associated with sore throats uh, you know we'd, we'd want you to bring your children in and for us to, to assess them and make yeah. a diagnosis on them and is, is this exclusive to younger people or can you get it at any no, age you can get it at any age you know so we've seen quite a few like young adults with strep a as right. well um you know and the idea is that you know we want to assess them and if they require that treatment get that treatment started as soon as possible to sort of prevent uh, the illness from you know uh, making that patient really unwell and also to um reduce the spread across uh, you know to other children as well yeah. and other adults. Now, we, we, we've got to talk about COVID because it, it's still there. And I'm hearing people say to me, said, oh, God, I know somebody that's got COVID. It's, it's, it's still there. So can you give us an indication as to how much of a problem COVID still is? It, it's still lingering in the background. We are still seeing patients uh, pretty much on a daily basis who have tested positive for COVID. Um, the symptoms don't, to be, don't seem to be as severe as yeah. they were obviously were um, when we first started out in 2020. Um, but we're still seeing, you know, those patients coming through. And again, it's about, you know, sort of patient education, just making sure that, you know, patients know that they can still um, get access to um, testing. Um, yeah. You do have to pay for it now, but you can get it in, you know, a lot of the local shops. Uh, and just do that self-measure to test and make sure that you're keeping yourself and everybody safe. Yeah. Now, one of the other aspects, of, of, and there are so many of them that Mersey Care cover, is mental well-being. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is something that has become almost like a bug word at the moment. Everybody knows somebody or even themselves can relate to this situation and mental health problems can man manifest themselves mm -hmm. in so many different ways from something, you know, quite small scale to something that could be really, really, you know, detrimental to somebody's health. Um, does this time of year coming in to the you know the spring period 
does it alleviate with the seasons? I say that because, I mean, I've, I've mentioned to you before, I mean, I'm a, one of these people that suffers from seasonally adjusted disorder, you know what I mean? I just can't wait for the for the warmer mm-hmm. months and the brighter months to come along and that. Is there any indicator that says, yeah, a lot of people feel like that and therefore the numbers of people who are perhaps maybe coming to see you lessens a bit as we make it towards maybe spring, April time? Uh, it's not something that we really sort of like kept uh, a track of, um, but certainly uh, over the last few months, we've not really seen any dip in the no, number of presentations really? of patients presenting with wow. mental health issues. Um, we're still working very closely with the first person project and, you know, referring patients to yeah. them um, Matty, just to access, Matty, yeah, yeah um, mm. to access, you know, that sort of one to one and group um, sort of sessions with them. Um I think it's it's just life in general. It's you know, people are struggling. You know, they're struggling with you know. There's a lot of affecting factors. Yeah, well, you know, man. with the the energy crisis. You know, with you know, every, the price of everything going up. Uh, you know, it, it's it's been a difficult few months, and there's no sign of that. You know, changing in any way in the future. So we've, I don't think we've seen any sort of drop really uh, in mental health. How do you determine? And I know this is a really kind of far-reaching subject. How do you determine when somebody is just a bit overwhelmed? with their workload and it's just getting on top of them a little bit to the point where somebody is approaching being a depressed individual. Is there any indicators that you can tell us about that? It's difficult for us because as walking centre nurse practitioners, we're not trained in sort of yeah. mental health oh, right. assessments. Okay. So it's not something uh, that's really um, an area that we can sort of diagnose a patient. Um, but we can certainly pick up on, you know, um, patients, you know, how they're feeling, you know, if they're feeling low. The key thing for us is to make sure that we are um, identifying those patients that are high risk and that, you know, might maybe, you know, approaching a crisis period and might need that acute mental health service uh, where we can access, like, the crisis team, you know, within the hospitals. Um, so, you know, if your patient's got suicidal thoughts or, you know, thoughts of harming anyone else, they're, they're key questions that we would ask all patients that present with any sort of mental health problem um, to make sure that those uh, patients are referred appropriately and acutely. Um, for patients that don't uh, display those symptoms, um, you know, we'll try and sort of ascertain, you know, what uh, might be causing um, the, the, the problems, what they feel might be beneficial to them. You know, is it talking therapy? Mm. Is it, you know, um, help by the GP through, you know, medications? Uh, but it's not something we would actually identify ourselves. But we'd certainly right. signpost well, that, that the is right the big place. thing. That is in, in the, entirely the ethos, I suppose, mm. of Mersey Care. It's the signpost, and it's like going to, uh, you know, going to a department store, and you're there saying you need to go here and you need to go there. It's a bit like that. And there are so many arms of it as well, aren't there? Absolutely. I mean, the the walking centre is um, is unique in that we will see anything and everything, and you know, we won't close our close our door on anybody. You know, and anybody can come in. Um, we will do an assessment. Um, of you and if it's something we can sort and treat patch up sew up um, mm. then we'll do that within the department but if it's not within our remit um, to deliver that care or treatment we'll try and identify the most appropriate place for you to go be that your GP be that um, you know to a surgical team and you know in the hospital be it to the mental health services um, so we are a bit like a triage service for a lot of other services yeah, and we'll try and yeah. direct the patients appropriately. Um, but the fact that we have such an open door and that anybody can yeah. uh, come in, um, you know, if we can't treat you there, we will hopefully send you to the right place that can. Yeah, yeah. And it's still a massive... Uh, would you say that... I mean, I've been talking about COVID and strep A and things like that. Would you say the kind of mental health pandemic that I de- say is still really, really a huge problem. We, it, we, it is, and yeah. uh, I don't see it going anywhere fast. Fast, um, you know, and for us, you know, I've, I've sp- spoken uh, with Matty very recently from the First Person Project um, mm. about trying to access, you know, um, delivery sessions for, actually, for our staff to help yeah. us identify patients and how um, we can better equip ourselves to make sure mm. that our patients are getting the right... Uh, care at the right time. Yeah. Um, do, do, do you find that when people are wanting to speak to Mersey Care or wanting to be directed to somebody that can help them, that they're quite forthcoming with the information that people are prepared to talk about it or sometimes is the requirement on you there to try and get to the bottom of it a little bit because the information isn't necessarily coming across? I think because we're one of the few places where you can just walk in 
yeah. uh, and be seen face to face. Um, That's going to make people a People are always relieved to be able to yeah. speak to you. And sometimes they'll come in with a completely different problem. And then just through that consultation, um, you know, other aspects that are affecting, you know, the, their life, be it a mental health issue, just slowly come out. And what you think might be a quick five, ten minute consultation will turn yeah. into like 45 minutes um, of you talking um, to a patient and trying to help mm. them access the correct care. Uh, I mean, only yesterday I had that, about that you know, that scenario yeah. where I thought nice and simple quick treatment in and out and uh, and it turned out that you know i was there a good hour um, and right. speaking to a patient but i know i've got them into a service i've got them appointment in a couple of days time to speak to someone and i know that after they've had that session they're going to feel so much better well, and it's not just the, the session as well it's knowing that perhaps maybe if that's somebody that's struggled with the kind of well-being the mental well-being and that the first steps are normally sometimes the hardest ones aren't yeah, they absolutely. and the fact that they've been they've seen to somebody like you and they know that they've taken a step and they know where they're going on to something else to can get themselves in a better place then i don't suppose you can put a value on that really can you it's what it'll make them feel like it's just so <laughs> nice to know that you know you can have a patient almost break down in front of you yeah but by the time they leave they just feel so much better and, just they're, at the end of the and they're so grateful and We've done nothing but listen, um, yeah. you know, and I think because we have that ability of, um, I don't say we have got all the time in the world, but um, we have got the luxury of that we can spend that little bit of extra time with patients Brilliant. that might need it. And I think that's what's so unique about the walk-in centres is because we don't have that appointment system that you can just walk in. Yes, you might have to wait a little bit um, to be seen, but hopefully that weight is worth it in the end. Yeah, yeah. It's Liverpool Live. We are speaking to Joe Nash from Mersey Care, who's uh, here to tell us about Mersey Care and what they do. But also, uh, the one thing I want to ask you, Joe, is w with regards to a little bit of a follow-on from this, are there some basic steps that you can take? You might not necessarily be at a stage where you need to pick up the phone and get in touch with you guys or be referred or anything like that. But you might be just thinking, oh, God, it's another day and I just want to kind of get myself right. So there are a couple of steps that you would advise people to take in terms of like a little personal regime, a little routine to get used to that will help them perhaps maybe set themselves up for the day. I mean, everyone's different. Some people are morning people. Some people are evening people. Um, you know, I quite like, uh, you know, to make sure I do some sort of, you know, time out session for myself yeah uh, and it might not be every day it might just be you know once a week on my day off but i think do you know what i'm just gonna have an hour to myself where i'm not gonna yeah. speak to anybody i'm going to do something that i want to do be that read a book watch tv go for a walk um but put some time aside for you mm. um, i think it's really important you can't look after anyone else if you're not yeah, yeah. looking after yourself mm. um mm. and just you know remembering you're you're important you know, yeah. you're, you're important and you know you you know it's uh, sometimes it's good to be selfish even if it's just no, for, I, I even if it's for one hour a week yeah oh yeah and I, I can be selfish when I want to be I can tell you and I, I always remember I mean using myself as an example here I uh, I used to because I, I would work on the weekends and have quite a bit of time in the week and I used to have like a, a two-man tent I'd throw it in the back of the car put the bike on the back of the car and I'd just go off and spend an overnight somewhere mm -hmm. cycling around doing that and I can't tell you how that made me yeah. feel now I know that not everybody's got the luxury of doing that but it's a relatively inexpensive thing mm. to do because if you're camping and what have it it's not as though you're paying out for a hotel but the difference that kind of liberation that you feel yeah. when you're just away from the the normal kind of rigmarole of life does make a big difference I think there's no, and there's no shame in saying you need help every now and then and I think having somebody someone anyone your dog yep. uh, just just to you know just to speak to and you know just let it all out yeah you know, I have, guess have, so. have a cry have a rant <laughs> yeah you know? funnily uh, enough we're talking dogs in a few minutes time so perhaps <laughs> maybe somebody might get a follow-on from this um so point of call then if people are thinking because the idea behind mercy care is that you don't go to a and &E and that you don't go immediately to the hospital mm -hmm. i've got this problem because it's not the way to do it if you want to get the best direction to the people that you need to speak to, then your organisation is the way to do it. So the early steps, how do people get in touch with Mersey Care? What should they do? Well, there are eight walking centres across um, Mersey Care. They cover Liverpool, Sefton and Knowsley. Um, if you're not sure where your local one is, you can always go on um, the Mersey Care website and it will list 
uh, all the walking centres, uh, where they are, what times they're open. Um, and it's as simple as just walking in. Yeah. Just walking in. Um, mm. You know, you can go via 111, um, but the quickest and easiest way is just to find yeah. your nearest one, walk in. That little walk in itself could be Absolutely. quite therapeutic as well, couldn't <laughs> it, I, I guess, really. Are you the kind of person as well from your own point of view? Because you, not only are you seeing people who might be having a few challenges in their life, and that's sometimes got to go on to you. Do you feel as though you've got to be, in order to be resilient to that, you've got to keep yourself somewhere, you've got to keep yourself healthy and fit. And that is that something that personally appeals uh, happens with you then, is it? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a demanding job um, mentally. Um, you know, you can see, you know, quite a number of patients in a day that vary from the very minor to the very major. You know, you could be crying, you know, have a patient crying with you one minute and then, you know, dressing a burn the next. Wow. And, <laughs> and sometimes listening to patient stories, you know, it can, it can be quite heartbreaking, you know, yeah, you know when imagine. they've come in and, you know, and a lot of the time it will resonate with you because you can empathise and think, well, you know, I can completely understand why you, you yeah. feel the way that you do, you know, or, you know, especially with things that happen in this day and age. Um, mm. So I think having that space away from work, making sure that you um, do have that disconnect, do something for you, um, you know, try and eat healthily, exercise, yeah. all the normal yeah. things. Yeah, um, yeah, but, yeah. you know, a little bit of, you know, what you fancy, a little treat every now and then, yeah. you know. Moderation. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. If you want to have to spend the day in your PJs, there's absolutely nothing yeah, wrong with it. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't have PJs, but that's another story. <laughs> now, Alison Shaw, it's been great speaking to you. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. So I take it you're going to go hot foot it back to one of the centres right now, then, Absolutely, yeah. Wow, wonderful stuff. Joe, thank you very much indeed, and we sh we appreciate you coming in, giving us the lowdown on what Mercy Care do, and we'll continue to do that with some more of your colleagues in the not too distant. Lovely. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, you are listening to Liverpool Live. It is Tuesday the 28th of February. I'm Roy Bastner. Taking you through until one o'clock. We're going to take a break. Got music on the way next from, let me just consult here, Heart. It's coming up. And don't forget, we're going to be talking with Debbie Hughes in the Freshfields Animal Rescue Centre very soon indeed. <laughs>